hi guys this is dio again with another video so today we are going to be talking about um folds um point of tension and how to shade clothes um literally if any clothes you want to shade you need to know the theory behind the folds on the clothes and how to shade them so first of all we are going to i'm going to be analyzing this particular reference and showing you where the folds and the point of te tension and the compression the compression is taking place so for for this particular clothes um uh, it's it's actually um very similar to every other clothes um when it comes to folds it all depends on it all depends on the point of tension which is mostly at the uh, from the arm to the chest and uh, from the uh, so mostly from the shoulder to the chest then from the arms to, uh, to the hands and yeah so whatever uh, whenever you're shading clothes make sure you um, make sure you keep in mind that the shoulder will always pull the the shirt upward then the chest is going to for the females the chest is going to pull the uh, clothes to the other uh, to the opposite direction so um, thereby giving the clothes um, a little bit of fold or um, fold depending on the type of material but uh, for this uh, kind of material um, it uh, also uh, depends on the type of style um, that the designer had on this particular um, dress so but uh, for the, this t-shirt um, as you can see the folds are dependent on um, the force in between the arm uh, the shoulder sorry and the arm and also the hands on the po in the pocket so the hands in the po pocket and the arms the arms is the sorry the shoulder sorry when i sometimes i see arms instead of shoulder the shoulder is pulling the shirt uh, on upwards and the hands is pulling the shirt downwards the force uh, normally pulls when you wear the shirt the, the force uh, normally pulls the shirt downwards and and your shoulder pulls it upwards so thereby creating um, a point uh, creating tension um, tension between the shoulder and um, the shoulder and the rest of the body so yeah there are top locking over crease there are so it's, it's just like there are top lo uh, locking over crease there are down locking over crease there are there are several crease that are created when tension is applied on the clothes so enough of the talking let's just dive right into and uh, knowing how to shade um, this particular crease um on the clothes so we've already understood where uh, why the crease are located and um and what is resulting to the tension between the clothes and everything everything so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using our painting brush to like um draw the darker parts of the crease of those folds so when you see crease when you see folds all of them are resulting to, they are they are all are referred to as um shadows so when you just keep in mind that this crease and these folds uh, on the shirts are shadows you have no problem with shading this particular um any kind of clothes so you just need to be very careful on uh, what kind of clothes you are shading there are translucent clothes and there are clothes that are transparent and transparent there are clothes that are um leather so there are some kind of way that you can handle such kind of um of shading but uh it all goes back to knowing how to represent the shadows um in the crease so what i i i am doing now is 
uh, when I apply the um, darker um, shadows in, along the crease, uh, along the uh, folds of the clothes, I also use my smudge brush and just drag the colors um, towards uh, the direction of the the folds. So this is just like an um, easier way to paint. You can just um, blend when you apply hard shadows. You can just blend. You can also use your eraser to clean up some rough edges. So there are, as you can see, there are uh, on the crease there are hard shadows. There are soft shadows. There are uh, yeah, there are hard shadows and soft shadows. So you, for you to uh, achieve such kind of um, texture and such, such kind of shadows you need to use a um, for those using photoshop you can use a hard airbrush um, a hard um, hard round brush and for those who are using uh, autodesk sketchbook you can use color builder brush or any or maybe a synthetic bro brush that you can use um, my brush on on procreate you can also use any other hard brush on procreate um by the way my brush is on gum gumroad and um fidia just in case you want to download and um, is there to download feel free to go and download and also um, do well to support thank you so much for doing that and um so this actually uh this place is actually tricky um I applied the color I'm just trying to like represent uh, the shape that is actually there so just uh, make sure you keep um, uh, everything into details so as you can uh, represent the flow and uh, and the shapes that are created um, by just mere um, tension um, between those um, body features so just make sure you keep in mind that uh, the more you represent uh, you uh, the more you paint this you are representing shapes so just keep in mind you um, the shapes that that just keep in mind that um, you're representing shapes more like a shapes and not just uh, applying shadows randomly so as you can see this is a particular shape I'm trying to like uh, recreate on the other side so just um, visualize all these shadows and this crease and these folds as visualize them as shapes so um, just uh, make sure you draw your reference closer just in case you are uh, getting distracted with some other sides just do well to draw your reference closer for those using phone you can keep your reference beneath your um, shading layer so that you can just turn on visibility anytime you want to check um, you can you can put it at the top of your uh, of your um, shading layer you can put it below anyone that you think is preferable as far as you can uh, compare the the distance in the shadow uh, between the crease and you can compare and also it's very important that you get a very nice sketch that can uh, guide you through the shading process as you can see i drew the i drew the um, tension the sorry the i drew the crease and the folds using my pencil uh, my pen so as to not get um, confused whenever I am painting so it guides me through the flow of the the shadows and everything so it's advisable that whenever you're dropping a sketch you are draw, drawing a sketch of uh, clues or whatever thing that you're doing even if it's a normal portrait for um, a particular subject just make sure you uh, identify some shadow areas then uh, so as to make it more easier for you to paint so these um, lines uh, inside these guidelines um, are very very important and also I want you to keep in mind the values of the highlights and the shadows area uh, closer so the the value of the shadows 
and the highlights lies closer they are just in between each other they are just uh, intertwined to each other you just need to uh, for instance as you can see i am shading those areas in which you don't see any uh, shad uh, shadows that much is the b is the base color so that area of the base color you can also apply your highlights on in between that that's base color area so i'm going to be doing um the highlighting later in this video so just do well to stick around and i've done i've already done a i've already done a clue tutorial before but i this is much more detailed um tutorial so yeah the highlight is mostly in between the shadows the mid-tone so just make sure you keep in mind that there is just little um uh, there's just little dif distance between the two so there is mostly a soft transition between the shadows and the highlights depending on the type of fabric you see more hard or soft transition and on a low range of value or like a high range of value values of the highlights and the shadows areas lies far apart like when you are um, shading um uh, when you are shading fabrics uh, that are leather uh, let's say uh, when you are shading leather uh, leather pants you can uh, notice that the uh, shadows and the highlights lies far apart so as to give that strong transition that hard transition and uh, compare to these um, silk or cotton materials but when you um, shading leathers you can notice that the transition and the highlights are mostly hard and the shadows are mostly hard so just keep in mind that there's a hard transition between um, the hard and uh, the hard uh, uh, shadows and highlights in uh, when you are painting leather jeans or leather pants or leather clothes but when we are painting clothes like this that are made of cotton or silk or um yeah mostly uh, cotton or silk you need to keep in mind that there there are always uh, having soft transition of uh, values so a uh, rubber and leather let's say leather and rubber um, materials are mostly having hard um, transition so just uh, keep that in mind and also and also you can add and or quit much glossiness as you want it will depend on the kind of material you are striving for so remember that latex has a like a mirror like effect objects near the material will reflect too so like there are odd objects near the uh, mostly when you are painting latex or uh, rubber or leather like um, leather like um materials you just make sure you keep in mind that there is a mirror like effect to it whenever there's an object near it um like there's an object most at times when the object is having colors um uh, is going to affect the um the values on the the let the latex or the leather you're painting so when you are shading you're going to incorporate that color that certain color that is reflecting on the leather jeans or the leather pants or uh, the latex or whatever you're painting to the painting so yes you need to keep in mind that the color the the lead the material also affects the color of the uh, sheet uh, of the shading as well so for this uh, situation we are using for this instance we are just using a cotton like um, material uh, so it doesn't have issue with reflection or translucency or anything any even though it has object near it it can barely um, it can barely bounce the, the it can it barely show on the the shirt you're shading or the dress you're shading so uh, I just want you to keep in mind that when you're uh, uh, drawing or shading leather, 
like substance there is always a bounce of color uh, on it so yeah i think then i think we are done with um translucency and yeah knowing how to draw um, paint values all i want you to do is just to put your attention to uh, knowing how to represent those or replicate those crease and those folds on the shirts that's all then when you're trying to shade out i think i'll try and see how i can make tutorials on latex uh, or rubber like uh, clothes so that you can see what i was talking about so rubber like clothes have re a different re reflection of colors that lies around around it like the environment matters a lot and the kind of light bouncing on it matters a lot and so much more so when you're shading normal clothes and shirts use uh, um, shirts like like cotton like shirts or um, fabrics um, made of silk or such uh, kind of stuff you don't need to worry about um, the bouncing of different colors and all those things translucency and all that so yes so um different fabric can make more or less complex half locks and uh, how and folds try to see them as like simple forms and as always keep them um keep track of those like cross contours and all those things uh, that's when we come to shading of uh, shirts of of um t-shirts um long sleeve they have like cross contours like they have um it depends on depends on the uh, kind of fabric but because the fabric on and um, shirts like um let's say there are fabrics uh, like for shirts made for uh, suits shirts made for suits the the jacket like normally the jacket or the inner um shirt, uh, long sleeve is um the no the let's say jacket of um let's say the suit in particular is um, made of thicker is thicker than like the shirt so abu so the folds pattern and the marking is slightly more rounded and like fold so I I think I would have to do another tutorial to show um, the folds and different folds on different type of clothes. But I think you get the idea of um, tension, um, points of tension, the differences between uh, creases and and all those folds on the clothes and how to represent them. So I don't think you, we have issues. Um, with all those spiral folds that look like a series of creases like you can uh, find there's uh, compression that's the, there when there's a compression between um in when you are wearing like long sleeve and there is a compression with uh, in between the arms when when you fold your shirt there's a compression in between the arms so the that's there's something uh, which is called um like spiral uh, folds the spiral folds look like a series of creases and i i told you earlier that the creases is called is also called folds so it's just this um lines between this uh fabric so all those lines i'm trying to represent using these shadows are called the creases i call the creases and also i call it folds as well so there are all these foldings uh, which uh, is a result of and uh, tension so also the, the it's called spiral um folds so around the cylindrical form they sit on so like when your arms when you are shading clothes uh, uh, around the arms you just make sure you keep in mind that there are spiral folds which are creasing um around the arm and just cylindrically they are creasing along around the arms so but for this um, issue for this our subject um for this reference we don't have issue with spiral folds um the cylindrical folds or creases uh, we are making we are shading a dress uh, a female dress so we don't have to um like 
I don't really have to shade a, that kind of um, spiral fold so but just get the idea on how to represent shadows on the creases and how to uh, uh, paint the highlight as well so so and there's there's something there's something uh, when it comes to shading of um, clothes as well uh, when it comes to shading of shirts as well after knowing the uh, point of tension you need to know uh, also the compression um, where to where the yeah it's just point of tension results to compression as well so yeah the pipe there are there are something we call there's something they call pipe fold so they are they are roughly like cylindric they are roughly in cylindrical forms um, this folds pattern happens when fabrics is suspended from a point of tension and compressed in a side near the point of tension so they, they are like mostly compressed like when yeah when there is a point of tension to be, uh, if, uh, there's a point of tension in between two areas and so there is mostly a compression in uh, in between them as well so that compression in between them is what is resulting to um, creases and also uh, folds so yeah i think we understand the concept behind all this um english so let's just enjoy the rest of the video i'm going to still explain how to add highlights on um, the reference on your clothes so enjoy so for those who are interested in getting this particular reference put of the reference i'm going to be dropping a link in the description box just in case you want to download them just go to the description box and download them straight up and do well to tag me whenever you um, do your own shading and render everything just do well to tag me on instagram when you're done yeah just enjoy and enjoy the process and yeah i can't wait to see what you've done uh, with this so yeah feel free to download the reference in the description box
So we are going to start adding the shadows on this particular painting. So all you need to do is just to add a new layer, then select a darker color, then start adding a darker tone um, in the area of the shadows. Just make sure the, sh the darker tone is giving a gradient, a gradient view. So you mustn't apply the whole dark color all over the shadows. You just need to apply it by the uh, beginning at the beginning of the um, shadow, so as to like have a smooth transition between the shadow, the hard shadow, um, the, the darker shadow, and the the shadows and the highlights. So we just want to have like a soft transition between those three so yeah and the mid-tone as well so yeah i just want to like get a soft transition between that shadow darker shadow then shadow then um, mid-tone then highlight so just make sure you just apply it to give a gradient um to um uh, give it gradient transition between those um values so as you can see i'm just like applying the colors then dragging it using my um, smudge brush
so guys after you're done applying the shadows um the next is the highlight so what you're going to do is add a new layer then make sure it's at the top of your um, shadows and make sure you shift the highlights to the lighter part of the um a lighter range of the color um, palette then you can color it using your painting brush i'm presently using my painting brush for the whole um, painting so what i use is the smudge brush i use the smudge brush to drag the colors um downwards so i use the smudge brush to drag the color downwards so for me to have a smooth transition between the highlights and the shadows i drag my uh, highlights downwards or below i make my highlights layer below um, my shadows so as to just get a smooth transition uh, between the values so instead of leaving the layer to be at the top of my um, shadows i took the layers downwards so i made the, the layers um, I, I kept the layer i dragged the layer downwards that's down below my shading layer just to have a smooth transition and do not hesitate, hesitate to blend whenever you are applying hard um, colors when you whenever you are applying colors using your hard um, brush or your painting brush make sure you blend using your smudge your smudge brush or your mixer brush so yeah that is how to actually apply um, highlights just to like get a smooth transition between highlights and um, shadows you can just do this as well you can also use a, a airbrush to get that transition between um, the highlights and the shadows that smooth transition since we are not painting a latex or something that is having a hard transition between the values so we are going to just um, use something soft or we are going to blend our colors to be very soft so as to get that smooth transition between those values so that's um, how to paint like clothes like this
so if this tutorial was helpful please do not hesitate to give it a thumbs up and um, make sure you you comment on this on this video let me know um if you're having any sort of difficulty or if you have any question or any uh, tutorial request you can drop it below and i will soon be dropping a an eb spent x tutorial on this platform and so many tutorials are coming so just in case you haven't subscribed do well to subscribe as well and turn on the notification bell to get notified anytime i release any form of video so if you are a new subscriber you're welcome to my channel and i drop videos um, more often on this channel and explain my process from start to finish so do well to stick around and also feel free to message me in my social media platform i am free to chat you can message me there um, on instagram or on facebook as well or on twitter using i'm using the same handle so just feel free to check me up over there so thank you so much guys for watching see you in my next video bye i feel like i'm losing my mind is everybody in the world blind please lord give me a sign a sign i feel like i'm losing my mind is everybody in the world blind I wanna be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and you'll be put down. It ain't your place. All this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it. The news if it's some loose shit. A stupid.